what's up guys it's graphic phoenix back with another video today and today is the april reptile room tour let's begin i hope you guys like that kind of weird style intro it is april 1st no this is not a prank we are actually doing a reptile room tour and just to start we'll start with sky the meraki blue tongue skink and the lights are all weird so i gotta kind of be careful how I'm filming because you can probably see the little like bands on the screen but this is Sky, the Meraki Blue Tongue Skink as I said before he's in a four foot by two foot by one foot tall cage he's got strip LEDs in the top which is what makes that kind of like pulsing effect and for a hotspot he has a heat panel set to a thermometer or a herbstat that basically makes it so it's about 90, 95 degrees on that hot spot. Not a whole heck of a lot's going on with him. He's a good lizard. He likes to hang out. As you can see, he just had a meal a little while ago. And uh, he's just about done with it. So that's Sky. Now we can move on to Bowser and Stella. And Bowser's actually out. I know last reptile room we kind of struck out. Come here. No. Well... These guys are kind of boring. Oh, he's definitely thinking about it now. Was that food? Was it? <laughs> you can see it's mid-morning here, early afternoon, and they're kind of settled down. They had their meal yesterday, and I think they're still trying to come over the food coma that was brought on with that. But their tank's doing really well. Still no signs of breeding, which sucks so bad. Um, what I'm thinking I might do is just get a smaller tank. Uh, or, I don't know, maybe convert the plant tank back into a cage for Bowser. And keep them separated for a little while. That way, I mean, maybe there'll be some breeding action. Reintroduce them a little bit later and see how it goes. But um, their lay box is still there. I do need to kind of, I don't know, I guess reorganize it. I don't know how to say it. But basically, I just got to go in there, re-wet it all down, maybe top it up, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't think she's gravid or anything, though, so no real rush on that one. But you can see there, there's some UVB bulbs. I will be changing those out again right away here. Um, probably next paycheck or maybe the one after that. Not too long from now. Their tank is looking good. Uh, this was a tank that I originally bought off Kijiji for a hundred bucks. Or, yeah, I think it was about a hundred bucks, 150, something like that. And it's four feet long by two feet deep by two feet tall. It uh, was in need of some dire care. Um, basically what I did was sealed the whole thing with Varathane and then added this bottom like we had to replace the whole bottom because it was all rotted out and gross so i added a little bit of a ledge as well so that we could have a ledge on there because as you can see it comes in handy i keep like all the stuff that i use on a regular basis just sitting right here um got a knife got the missouri tortoise diet hand sanitizer paper towel there's stem root there's the like dustpan sweeping there's the shake box for the crickets with the calcium all the calcium, the RO mister for the Nepenthes up there, and the Crescent Echo Diet for Tig. This is the planted tank. I'm not gonna go into too much detail right now. All I'm gonna be saying is that it is going to be changing a hell of a lot in the next little while. I plan to do a couple things in here. I would like to replace the fixtures. I know I just did that not long ago. But I don't think the plants really love the UVB. Um, you can see here with all of the... I don't know what that's from, but it's growing really, really, really weird. And then the same thing on the hibiscus up there as well. It's starting to go all crinkly like that. So I'm not sure what's causing that, but something is. And I'm thinking it might be the light. I'm not sure though. Um, I also plan to basically put on a huge... Um, mat of coconut core on the back so I can grow the plants that I'm bringing in from Ecuador I believe they're coming in from uh, so that'll be super exciting the the plant show is actually this weekend in Edmonton Alberta 
and they're shipping them from there. So hopefully sometime next week I'll get that shipment of plants. Don't worry, you guys will see it. I strongly recommend you watch it. This tank is about to change dramatically. Like I said in the chameleon video I did on Monday or Tuesday, this tank will be filled hopefully next week. Not going to give you guys any hints as to what I'm getting, but if you want to guess down below, you certainly can. I'm not going to stop you. I actually really like this tank right now. As you can see, this one cactus is, or succulent, I always call it a cactus. This one succulent is always uh, not doing so well. It flowered already, so I feel like they might be just kind of a flower and then a die off. I'm not sure. Um... Up here, this is a project you guys haven't seen. I did film it originally, and I'll actually have to finish off filming pretty soon here, but I'm growing avocado. <laughs> as interesting or not as interesting as that sounds. And my girlfriend's mom went to Morocco, and she brought back these dates. So I figured I'd just throw it in the water and see what happened. And look, it's actually growing. What the hell? <laughs> Isn't that funny? I do need to top up those cups, though. Um, we got the best poster of all time, and the, somebody told me what this is, it's like a Viseria something something, I don't know, uh, somebody told me what it is though, I do have it written down somewhere, I just didn't memorize it. <laughs> From there we can go to Kaiman, it's kind of funny how much he hates the camera, so I'm not going to go too much closer than what it is now, he's doing awesome, I did just update you guys, like, three or four days ago so if you want to see that video go check it out I'll leave it in a card up there or up there I'm not sure which one but you guys can go see that his tanks doing well uh, in that update video I did say that I'm gonna buy some jungle dawn LEDs so I could provide some light for this guy right here he's not doing quite as well as I wanted him to I feel like that's partially because I mean Kai <laughs> is probably trampling it and making it go bye bye but I'm not sure. But for those of you who don't know, he's in a 2 foot by 2 foot by 4 foot tall cage. That's the minimum size, or the recommended size, for a male veil chameleon. And he's a super translucent male veil chameleon. Looking really good. The shell. The main man. What's up, homie? Do you see the camera? Oh hell yeah, does that mean I get a booty dance? Can I get a booty dance? Are you too hungry? You're not gonna booty dance? Dude. Come on. Ah. Okay, well, no booty dance from the showman, but if you guys go check out that video that I posted last week and that I left in the card just a minute ago, go check that out, he booty dances two times two times it was such a good treat his cage is looking meh obviously I literally changed his water yesterday and I didn't think to do it before the video don't do that change the water dish every day <laughs> his tank is looking really really nice um, I am going to be replacing the solar glow in there and I am going to be planting those succulents probably right here here-ish I don't know we'll have to see but I want attention. For those of you who don't know, Sheldon is a Herman's tortoise. A, I believe that's a Western Herman's tortoise. I can't remember what the detail in the belly pattern is to make a difference between the two. But he's in a tank with topsoil, organic topsoil, as the substrate. He's got kind of like a den over there. Plenty of space. His tank is five foot by two foot by one foot tall and as you can see there's some geranium growing in here there's a dracantia uh... there was several other things growing in here at uh, several different times of the year but uh... he's a little destroyer and he likes to destroy this stuff but i love him he's a good guy he's awesome can I bite your finger while you're petting me? <laughs> I strongly recommend that you guys research tortoises and see if they're good for you because 
if you live in a warm climate, whether it be like Arizona or um, down south, Florida is a great one. Like a lot of those people can keep their tortoises outside pretty much year round, and that would be ideal. I hope to make a tortoise pen for him this year and have him outside for, I don't know, at least seven, eight hours while I'm home at least. Uh, and he can soak up some of those UVB rays so he can grow nice and proper. With the mention of Sheldon, I actually almost forgot this. We should weigh him. So at the beginning of March, he was five. He was 495 pounds. <laughs> he was 495 grams. Right now, he's sitting in at. 521.5 damn here getting almost too big for the scale dude he's growing still still growing that was enough on the shellman let's get a nice good shot of him here from there we begin our dart frog coverage uh, the ranatomea variabilis was out I don't know where he is right now, but right after this video, I'm going to be feeding these guys. So let me know if you guys want to see a how to feed your dart frogs. It's pretty easy, but I guess some of the beginners might not exactly know how to. So I can certainly make that for you. As you can see, I did put in that Fishman glass hut for the variabilis. It doesn't really go with his colors, but that's okay. This tank's coming along pretty nice. I know I used to know what this is called, but... I now know it as the Swiss cheese philodendron is doing really good. The red nerve plant is doing great. My buddy gave me this. I have no idea what the heck it is, <laughs> but it's a really nice plant. And then I believe that's a bird's nest fern at the back there. And it's starting to grow some new leaves as well. So everything seems to be liking that small little like grow up tank that I did. And that's good. I'm happy with that. Uh, I guess sticking with the theme of the dart frogs, uh, if you guys didn't see my last video, the tadpole slash frog, it was basically a frog, actually ended up dying on me. I have no idea what happened, but I think it might have drowned or something like that. Um, this guy right there, he doesn't have his front legs quite yet. However, this guy is the closest to coming out of the water. This damn glare is killer, but... You can see there, he's got a little bit of tail left, but he's pretty much a full dart frog now as he freaks out here. But as you can see, it is tilted enough to where there is a dry spot up there, and if he really wants, he can climb up this top here. So that's the goal with that. This guy here, I don't know why I really put into the elevated setup because he doesn't even have his front legs yet, so he's not really that close. But, I mean, whatever. Everything else is working pretty well. My general like care and husbandry video should be coming out pretty soon with these guys. I, I, I plan to make that, don't worry. I know a lot of people have asked me how I take care of it and what I do. I will show you, don't you worry. A quick sidetrack from the dart frogs because it's on our way. This is the shrimp tank. It's looking real nice right now. That Echinodorus fuego at the back is starting to get a new growth there right in the middle so that's perfect that's exactly what I want um, these are doing the java fern on the logs are doing okay so I might put those up for sale pretty soon here and the shrimp themselves are actually doing really well I don't see any buried uh, females but I'm hoping that there will be pretty soon. I want more babies! Come on! So this is the Ranatomea Imitator Chizuda's tank. And typically they're not out at this time of day. Every now and then you can find one of them. But I don't think we're going to be that lucky in this video. I will have a highlight on just them coming up. I don't know, whenever I can get some good video of them. Oh! I lied. Check it out. I knew it. These guys are normally out quite often. They're not typically all hiding. I do have three in this tank. Uh, it seems to be working fairly well at the moment. And like I said, 
earlier in the video, I will be doing a feeding video of all the dart frogs. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. We'll see if I can open it up here without him running. Ooh. Your tank is doing really, really well. This coral berry is not growing at all. I don't know what's going on with it, but um, the in the back bromeliad back there actually sent out a pup that I ended up chopping off and it's growing in the plant tank and uh, they moved their eggs somewhere they actually had eggs right in there and okay so there we go they had their eggs right there so maybe we got tadpoles somewhere I'm gonna have to do some fishing oh and check it out I just found these right now looks like some more eggs to me I know it's focusing on the wrong part, but tough luck. You're just going to have to believe me. <laughs> Looks like some more eggs, so that's perfect. These guys are doing really well. Um, I'm not going to harvest these eggs. If I notice some babies hatching out or if I find some tadpoles somewhere, I will certainly let you guys know. That's a crypt. I don't remember what exactly it's called. There's a Talantia, and then that like red and green vine is actually a baby tears or... Um, I don't remember the scientific name, but it's like a form of baby tears that my buddy gave me. And his was actually completely green. And I think because I have such high intensity light on here, mine's turning red. So, that's sweet. I know I spent a long time on those guys, but these guys probably won't be visible, so you won't have to worry too much. These are the reticulata, Ranitomae reticulata. They were laying eggs. Uh, I have no idea where, when. If there's any still in there, I don't really know, but I like their tank. Their tank is okay. A little bit of a drainage issue. I will deal that with that when the time comes. And here is the Ventry Maculata Borgia Ridge. I mean, let's be real, we're definitely not going to see them. I don't think we've ever seen them in a, <laughs> in a video before. So I don't think we're going to start today. Yeah, I don't see any back there. But they're doing really well. They're breeding like horses. I actually will be selling these guys off um, once I have my round of babies that comes out. I probably will sell these guys off. So if you live in the Calgary area and you want some proven breeder Ventry Maculatas, let me know. I could sell you their whole tank or just the frogs themselves. So hit me up, leave a message or a YouTube comment, whatever you want. And we'll see. If you're not in Calgary or in surrounding areas, don't bother, I'm not going to ship these guys, so it's not really worth your time. Check this out, I figured we'd take a peek real quick while we're here. Beautiful Phalaenopsis Orchid. Now, <laughs> I can actually see Tig back there. So there's Tig, looking nice. I'm not going to do too much on her. She's a partial pinstripe Harlequin Crested Gecko. That's all I'm going to feature her for in this video because I really don't want to move this. This is the uh, custom background tank that I'm filming. So note, it is in the works. And for those of you that want to know how to build something like this, it's on the way. Don't worry. And to wrap up the tour, we have the OG, the oldest striker. The high yellow leopard gecko. There he is back there. Get a bit of a bigger shot right there. Check it out. He's looking fresh. He just shed not too long ago. Um, I'm not going to bug him too much right now, but now I'm going to have to wait for him to move back over here so I can put his hide back. But he's a leopard gecko. Awesome. Really tame. Super chill. Just a great pet. Don't really have too much else to say. Everybody's doing really well. Maybe we'll turn to Sheldon and see if he'll give us a booty dance to close things out. Can you? Oh. Oh. No, he's just kind of leaning in it. He's not really booty dancing. No. Well, on that sad note, my friends, thank you for watching. I know this is a very long reptile room tour. You got a lot of me talking, you got some animals, you're good. So if you made it this far into the very end of the video, <clears throat> Leave the sentence, all hail the king, in the comments down below. That way I'll know you made it to the very end of the video. 
If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave them in the comments. As well as, if you have a word that can kind of describe my reptile room, like the lair, I know that's what Viper Keeper calls his like reptile collection is the lair. So if you guys have a really cool name like that, be sure to drop it in the comments down below. And if I end up picking yours, I'll give you a shout out. Why not? So if you like these kind of videos, you like reptiles, you like dart frogs, you like shrimp, subscribe to my channel. You will not be disappointed. I try and make one to two videos a week. May Madness is coming, my friends. April is upon us. May follows it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great weekend. And I hope you enjoyed the 20 minute video. Graphic Phoenix, out of here.